Okay, should be recording now. Um, can someone come off of mute real quick just so I can make sure my speaker's on correctly? Hello, hello. Perfect. Thank you so much, Justin. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about 9.8 and 9.9, .9, and they're kind of like the buildup to get to 9.10. Okay. Um, <laughs> So 9.8 is where we're introducing like what a power series is. And so essentially what you have in here now is you have X's, right? We didn't have X in the picture before today. Um, it was just always in, right? In was the only variable. So X, this part here doesn't really, it can affect the convergence of the series only because the exponent has an in in it as well. Right. So if this did not have the in exponent, there's my Alma and Ben has come in. So all we're missing is Daniel today so far. <laughs> um, if this did not have the power in, then essentially your X isn't going to change or affect the convergence or divergence of anything. OK, but because it has that in power, it now causes some issues. OK, so with the X, though, you have to identify a center. OK. And when you're talking about that center, when you find convergence, it's usually either going to be at that center point or it's going to be at an interval around that center point. And that interval could be an open interval or a closed interval. It just depends on the situations. OK, so we're going to see a bunch of different cases. I think I picked about six examples per section. Um, and then the next section is just more of manipulating it to look like a series. So for 9.9, .9, I think I only had two examples. I think I covered like three good ones in the video, and there's only four problems in 9.9 .9 in the homework, okay? So those three videos plus one of the ones I do today should be some good examples to follow to complete the homework. Um, if you do have questions on like where things are coming from when we get to that section, please let me know, okay? Because that one does require a little bit of manipulation. Once we get to 9.10, they will give you a function like they do in 9.9. .9. Notice how here they give us a function and then they tell us it like a power series. They'll give us a function and it's not one that we can manipulate the like we'll manipulate today to make it look like a power series. So there's another way to do it and it's called Taylor series or McLaurin series, okay? It just depends on where the center is. If the center is zero, it's called a McLaurin series. If it's if the center is not zero, then it's called the Taylor series, but it requires derivatives and then patterns. Okay. And so it'll be interesting, but all of this is built up to like to that. Okay. So we'll talk about some that we can manipulate and how do we find those radiuses of convergence. And then eventually we'll get some different kinds of functions that we'll mess with as well. Okay. But for starters, we need to talk about how can you tell where a power series will converge, okay? And I think I noticed that one of the problems in the homework didn't even ask us to do any of that. It just stated, said to state where the power series is centered, okay? I saw there was, I think, one or two of the problems in the homework like that. So they're not asking you to do anything. They're just asking you to look at it and identify the C, okay? And normally what you're looking for is you're trying to zoom in on where the X is at, okay? So you always have X with the power of N, or you could have X minus a number with the power of N. In this particular series, our term that we're trying to focus on is right here. And you notice that it doesn't have plus a number or minus a number with the X, right? It's just X. So X to the power N is the same as saying X minus zero to the power N, which means that our center is just zero. Now that's a little bit different if you had a different situation, right? What if this term right here was X minus two to the power N? Then that would mean that our center is two. What if it looked like X plus five to the power N? What would the center be? Negative, Negative five, exactly. Ours just didn't have plus or minus a number, right? Before the power. So our center was just zero. 
So it really doesn't even matter what all the rest of this stuff is to identify the center. It's just looking at the X to see if anything is being added or subtracted to that X. So those two are nice, right? They're real quick. <laughs> They're not too much to do. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had that discussion with you guys, like what you're supposed to be looking at, okay? Um, now the other rest of the problems are the ones where we have to do some work. <laughs> so problems two through six for these examples, we will be doing, um, and it's ratio tests. And why is it ratio test? Because you have something to the power in, right? And it says on that little sheet, if I go pull it up, under the ratio test, it says it's useful for factorials and nth powers, right? So we always wanna use our ratio test when we have factorials or nth powers, and we have an nth power right there, okay? So that's why for all of the power series, all of them, we're always gonna be using the ratio test, okay? So if you see the word power series anywhere in the problem, anywhere, you automatically know you've got to do the ratio test, okay? It's the fastest, easiest way to figure out where this thing is converging. So let's go ahead and start trying it. So I like to write down the test I'm going to use because then later I have to mention it. I could just say, oh, well, this thing implies this and that's it, okay? So for the ratio test, we're going to have to figure out what the next term over the original nth term looks like. And because my nth term is a fraction, um, I'm going to actually do basically this one. Instead of divided by the original, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the original, right? So let's see what happens when we change all the n's to n plus 1. My brain wants to add together already, but I should not. Okay, so that's what this nth term looks like if I change all the n's to n plus one, but then I have to divide by that original nth term, right? So we're gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So it's just n plus four at the top and then the negative one in x to the n at the bottom. And you don't have to write this step. I just like to write it so that when someone reads this later, they know where all this stuff came from, right? Mm -hmm. And this I got from where, right? The ratio test. It tells me right there, that's what I need to be doing, okay? So for the ratio test, you have to find this limit. Now, I know how to simplify from here. Um, I'm going to write it out this first time, but I really want y'all to start getting in the hang of being able to identify what's gonna cancel without having to rewrite so much, right? Because it's gonna save time when you're taking the test, right? So I'm gonna write it out this first time. And then after that, we'll just start talking about what's gonna cancel, okay? So I talked to you guys the last time that you can rewrite this, right? By kind of reverse using the power rule. So when you multiply things with the same base, you add their exponents. So you can split that sum of exponents up into an expression like this. And the same thing for x to the n plus one, that could be x to the n times x to the one. Because those things with the same base, when I multiply them, I add their exponents, right? So I'm going backwards kind of in the direction we normally go. So when I finish simplifying this, right, the negative one to the power n's are gonna cancel and the x to the n's are gonna cancel. So I'm just gonna have negative one to the first power, x to the first power. I am gonna have this n plus four still. And at the bottom, both of those are gone. So all I have is the n plus five. So back, back, back when, right? If you had an expression like this, how do you simplify that? 
you subtract the exponents. Here's another way that I've seen people do it. They go, who's got the smaller exponent? This one, right? So they cancel all of those, but if they cancel 201 out of there, how many are they gonna have left over? 74, right? You see how that works when you do it on paper? That's the exact same thing that I'm going to do to go from here to here, okay? So notice I have negative ones, right? But if I wanna take out the X to the N, it's only gonna take out that part of the exponent. It's, I'm gonna be left with negative one to a positive one exponent, okay? The same for, goes for X N and X to the N plus one. I can cancel these, but it's gonna cancel that part of the exponent, leaving me with just X to the one, okay? And then I have the N plus four and down there would be the N plus five, okay? So you don't have to do this rewriting step you can cancel it like this, okay? You just make sure that you're canceling oh, completely away the smaller exponent, but that's only taking away the matching exponent from the bigger one, okay? So I won't do this part anymore, okay? But I wanna get y'all used to kind of just simplifying it that way. It's gonna save time, right? That takes a long time to write down, okay? So once we have this, I'm going to take out the part that has the X because it really does mess with things. So I'm gonna take the X part out to the front, but it's in absolute value bars. And since I don't know what X is, it could be anything, right? When you're talking about a function, you could plug in any X value to that function, right? So I don't know what X is. I don't know whether it's positive or negative. So we're gonna keep it inside the bars, but it doesn't have an N in it. So it doesn't need to be inside the limit. The limit only goes for the variables in. So I'm left with this negative one over that and then in plus five. So I don't know why I made that bar wrong, but it's okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do that step where we divide everybody by the highest power of the bottom, right? Or you could do L'Hopital's rule, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna pretend that this is negative n, and when I divide negative n by n, I'm gonna get negative one. This is a negative four. I would get negative four over n when I divide by n. And I do the same to the bottom. When I divide one by n, I get one. And then when I divide five by n, I get five over n. So we end up with these two guys going to zero, and I just end up with the absolute value of negative one, right? And the limit of the absolute value of negative one is just the absolute value of negative one. But what's the absolute value of negative one? It's just one. So x or absolute value of x times just a plain one is just the absolute value of x all by itself, okay? Now the ratio test tells us that once we get that, that value for L, right? We've already taken the limit. So this is L. And it tells us that L, if L is less than, zero, than one, then it will converge, right? So go to our ratio test. It converges if L is less than one. So that's what I'm gonna say. We're gonna say series converges when this thing is less than one. And this problem is only asking me for the radius of convergence. As long as this side looks like X minus your center, then you your radius is essentially what's over here, okay? And if I look at my original, right? Here's where X was, what was my center? Zero. Mm -hmm. So right here, don't I have X minus zero inside the bar, right? So then that is my R over there. And so for the answer, you would just say R equals one. And I think they just want you to type in the number one. There's only three possibilities that you could get for R. You're either gonna get zero, you're gonna get some positive number, whether it be a fraction, it'd be one, it'd be five, whatever it is, some number, or you can even get infinity as your radius, okay? So 
I think we're going to address that at some point today. I don't remember when exactly on which one, but we will see one that has a radius of infinity. Okay. So essentially, we're just going to keep working at this. It's not asking me for the interval. The interval of convergence is the longer problem, okay? Because the interval, we know that it converges within that interval, and then we have to test the ends to see if it converges at the ends, right? That's the one that has like two extra steps outside of the ratio test. But for right now, these first two, we're just trying to practice our ratio test, okay? And really, I want, just wanted to give you some examples where you could practice this reducing without having to rewrite everything. So let's try that here. I left myself less space because I wanted to try to practice um, that simplifying method. So let's go ahead and say we're going to do the ratio test again. And we're going to do the limit. And instead of me writing a n plus 1 over a n, I'm just going to do it. So x and 3 times n. But the n is going to become n plus 1. So make sure you're multiplying the 3 times the n plus 1. Same thing happens at the bottom. It's three times n plus one factorial. And then the reciprocal of the original. So here, this is going to become 3n plus 3 once you distribute that 3. So then this x to the 3n will cancel only the part of the exponent that has the 3n. So I'll still have x to the power 3 left. And then at the bottom, if I distribute this 3, I get 3n plus 3 factorial. Now I'm going to write this down and then I'm going to explain why this is. So this is what that reduces to. So this will reduce to this. Why? Because we know that we can rewrite factorials until we get to this guy, and then the factorial will cancel, right? So if I take out this first factor, I'll be left with one less factorial, which would be 3n plus 2 factorial. But if I got the 3n plus 2, I would be left with 3n plus 1 factorial. But if I took one out of there, I'd be left with 3n factorial, right? And then this 3n factorial is going to cancel with that 3n factorial. And all I have left are those three factors at the bottom. Now here, it doesn't even matter if I take out the x. Oops. If you take it out or not, you're still going to get the same thing. Because what happens to this fraction as n goes to infinity? Mm -hmm. And so does it really matter if the x is there or not? It's going to get multiplied by 0 at some point, right? So it's just going to end up being 0. Now, this one's weird because a lot of people will be like, oh, well, the radius of convergence is 0 then. No, that's not true. Remember, the radius of convergence, convergence comes from your application of your ratio test. 
So I got an L, didn't I? I got L equal to zero. Isn't that always less than one? For all X, it doesn't matter what X is, zero is always less than one, okay? So actually means that your radius is infinity. Because no matter what X is, it could be negative infinity, X could be positive infinity, it could be zero in between. It doesn't matter what X is, your series will always be convergent, okay? Doesn't matter what you would have plugged in for there, anything times zero was still gonna give you a number less than one, right? So that was, I didn't know it was gonna happen so soon that that was gonna happen later. <laughs> but we did finally get one. Just be careful because the most common misunderstanding there is they'll say that the radius is zero because you got zero as the limit, but that's not the truth, okay? Yeah, well, it, it, it's it's the most common thing that happens when I grade this test. And, and to be honest with you, when I'm looking at these things, I look at the test before I start it, and then I go look at the test again after I'm finished doing all my math, just because I need to confirm what it was I was doing and why was I doing it and what was what does it mean. <laughs> Otherwise, I forget because there's so many tests. So this ones are now, the last three, are finally talking about the interval of convergence. So they don't want us to stop when we find R, okay? Finding R is almost all of the work, but not quite all of it, okay? There's still a little bit more to do after we find R. So I'm going to start this next problem, same as I did with all the others, is doing that ratio test to figure out what R is. So let's see for this one, which is also cool because you get lots of experience with this ratio test, right? It's my favorite, and you see why, too, because it works on like almost all of them. Um, so I really do like to do it. The only time it doesn't work is if you do all this work for the limit and you get one then you'd have to do some other tests because the ratio test is inconclusive if you get L equal to one. Okay, where's my thing, my bottom? So all the ends are gonna change to N plus one. So N plus one plus one, N plus one plus four, N plus one, and that's it. I don't have a denominator, so I can put A in the original at the bottom. And if we practice that canceling, we should be able to wipe some stuff out. So this X to the N will cancel out this N exponent. Negative one to the n plus one will cancel out the n plus one exponent part. So I'm left with a negative one times n plus five times x. And at the bottom, n plus four. I'm going to take out the absolute value of x. And this is just negative n minus five over n plus four. And we've kind of already done limits similar to this one, but I'll do it. It's gonna be negative one minus five over n, one plus four over n. And what do we get after everything? If we take the limit, what number will we get for that limit? Mm -hmm. but inside the bars, right? Yeah. And so we know that if it's inside the bars, it's just like multiplying by one. So we get the absolute value of X all by itself. And we know that the series merges when that guy is less than one. Now here's where knowing how to write that 
in without the bars. Okay. So I don't know how many of y'all remember that part. I tried to briefly mention it in the video, but when you have something like this, okay, the other way to write it is negative B less than A less than B. So whatever's in the bars goes in the middle. And then the letter, the number, whatever this number was, goes negative and positive on the ends, okay? So for my particular problem, this can be written as negative one less than what's in the bars less than one. We definitely use that rule for rewriting absolute value inequalities. And then this tells you what X is in between, right? So that actually tells you your interval. It's from negative one to one, but since this doesn't have bars, these don't have bars, okay? And then this is where you have to take it a step because the ratio test only tells you what X is in between. It doesn't tell you whether X or whether the series converges at the index, okay? It only tells you that it converges between in that interval, okay? It doesn't tell you whether or not it converges at X equal negative one or at X equals one. So those are the times where we have to evaluate the endpoints, okay? And it's not that complicated. Most of the time you can use the nth term test right away to say, no, it doesn't. So it stays in open parentheses. But every now and then, and I think in all of these problems, <laughs> it's gonna happen to us once where you'll try it and then you'll realize, oh, it does actually converge, okay? And so then it should be a closed bracket around that number to include that X value. So let's look at both of these endpoints separate. First, we're gonna look at X equals negative one. So I'm gonna rewrite my series, but instead of writing X, I'm gonna write negative one. So this is gonna become negative one to the power n. Now remember, when you have two things of the same base, that's like adding their exponents together. So n plus one plus n is two n plus one. And you could stop here, but I'm just gonna go one more step and say, oh, I'll leave it like this. Why did I change negative one to the power two n plus one to just a negative? No matter what n is, whether n itself is odd or even, what happens to it when you multiply it by two? Not necessarily, well, it will be positive because n's are all positive, right? But it will be even, won't it? Even if it were odd to begin with, as soon as I multiply it by two, doesn't it make it an even number? Mm -hmm. And then what happens if you take an even number and you add one to it? It's always odd. So if I have negative one to an always odd exponent, it's always going to be negative one. And so then I need to write an exponent on there. I know it's always gonna be a negative one in the front, okay? So two n plus one is always odd. And negative one to an odd exponent will always just be negative one. Yes. I've never met a Robin. Was that the question? No, hold on. Uh, Are you guys asking me a question? I think I'm just going to mute. I don't know what. They were talking about, how come I can't, that's weird. 
I don't know. That was weird. Okay. So for this one, I also just want to point out, okay, because it can happen and it's going to happen later. So you're going to see this 2n and 2n plus 1 situation. But 2n is always what? Always even. Okay. And I'm mentioning this now, not for no reason, okay, because it's going to happen when we get to 10. Because in 10, there's going to be a formula, you're going to use it, and then you're going to have all these terms. And then you need to put that, all those terms into like a formula, okay? It's just like if you saw, you know, one times two times three dot, dot, dot to the n, right? If you saw that, you would know that's n factorial, right? If you saw two times four times eight times... 16 times 32, you know that's two to the power n, right? So you're gonna have to start seeing some patterns like that. And if you start seeing numbers like one times three times five times seven, what are all those numbers? Odds, right? So it's two, yes, two n plus one factorial, okay? If you start seeing two, four, six, eight, blah, 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 blah. It's two in factorial, okay? So we'll have to start getting used to seeing these patterns, okay? That's why I'm kind of mentioning this even odd, the way even and odd numbers are written, okay? I don't know if any of y'all have to take like discrete mathematics or anything like that, but they kind of talk about those two at some point like having always even and always odd and what it looks like as an expression. It's interesting. <laughs> they do proofs for there. Um, okay. We're still on the first endpoint. We still haven't made our conclusion. Will this series converge or diverge and why? So this is just side notes. This has nothing to do with nothing. It's just something I thought I'd mention. Will this diverge? It does diverge by the nth term test. Since the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression is just gonna equal negative infinity. But that's not zero, is it? Right? And so according to the nth term test, if you take that limit and you don't get zero, it automatically diverges. Okay? So this one will diverge because when I take that limit, I don't get zero. I want to see if I can squeeze the other one in here, even though I left myself room on the next page. But I feel like it might fit. So now we need to check the other endpoint. So I'm gonna go back. It's really a matter of where are you looking? Go back to the original and plug in one for X. Now, why did I write it? Without the one to the power n. One to the power n. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what that exponent is, right? whether that exponent was zero, because n goes from zero to infinity, right? So it wouldn't matter if the exponent was zero, if the exponent was one, two, three. This factor will always just be positive one. And if multiply something by a positive one, it's not going to change this expression, is it? So I'm just writing that expression. And this one is going to diverge for the exact same reason as the other one. Only thing is, is that I'm going to get plus or minus infinity when I take the limit. So this diverges by the nth term test since the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing equals 
It equals infinity, but because of this negative one part, it could be positive or it could be negative. Regardless, it's not zero, right? So it really doesn't matter if the limit is positive infinity or if the limit is negative infinity. Either way, it's not zero, okay? So then that tells us that our interval is going to be negative one to one, and it's going to stay open because it did not convert the ends. I was able to squeeze it in there. So let me scoot this one up. Maybe I might need more room. So I picked all of them on purpose because they all should be doing different things. So you can kind of see the different cases. These are not problems that I can just look at and know the answers. There are some from the previous sections where I can look at it and I know this is the one section where like, I really don't know what's gonna happen. I have to actually go apply the test and plug things in and simplify it before I'll know. Hope I'm not erasing this stuff underneath with all the heat. Nope, okay, good. So we still have two more, so they should be doing different things. I don't know what exactly they'll be doing differently, but we'll find out. So we're going to start again by doing our ratios just to find that radius. And this one does have a fraction, so I will have to multiply by the reciprocal, right? So let's see, I replaced the n here with n plus one. So you have an extra n plus one. I replaced this n with n plus one, this one at the bottom and the exponent at the bottom. And then I just did multiply by the reciprocal of the original. So this negative one n plus one is gonna cancel out the n plus one part of the exponent. This x minus four to the n will cancel out the n part of the top exponent. And six to the power n will cancel out the n exponent for six to the n plus one. So you end up with negative one um, x minus four in n plus one and a six. I think I'm going to do two things. I'm going to take out the x minus 4 part because it doesn't have n's in it. And then I'm actually going to multiply the negative 1 in the n. And I'm going to distribute the 6 at the bottom. 
So this is what it will look like. You may be able to look at that and know what the limit is, but I'm actually going to apply that little step. So at the bottom, the highest uh, degree is in. So I'm going to divide everybody by in. And I get this. And then when I take the limit as n goes to infinity, I actually end up with this as my uh, L. Now the absolute value of negative one six is just positive one six. So you end up with this expression. And we know that the series converges when your L is less than one, right? So when this thing is less than one. Or if you multiply both sides by six, when this is less than six. So the radius is six. However, if you want to get the interval, you have to rewrite this um, inequality. So I'm going to rewrite the inequality as negative six, what's inside the bars, and then positive six. And if I add four to all three pieces, we're going to get negative two X and 10. So potentially this is my interval. I'm just not gonna say it's exactly the interval. I'm not gonna say I equals this because I don't know what's happening at the ends, right? We have to go confirm. Do does the series converge when x is equal to negative 2? Does the series converge when, it, when x is equal to 10? We know it converges when x is between negative 2 and 10. We just don't know what's happening at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 10. And this one is a half and half. So it will come out one works and one doesn't, OK? So one of our ends in our interval will have a bar. You change my microphone. <laughs> that was weird. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah, we lost you there for a second, but you're back. I don't know why it's it was telling me something about my microphone. I stopped talking for a minute too, so <laughs> that might have been I don't know what happened. Come on, computer. My mouse is thinking, so I'm not gonna do anything until it stops thinking. Why does it keep doing that? Hmm. But you guys can hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to see what's happening at x equal to negative 2. And then eventually we'll see what's happening at x equal 10. So for negative 2, again, we have to look at the original. See, it's not... Um, I'm going to close Visualizer real quick and then try to reopen it and see if it'll restart it. Because I wrote something on my paper and it's just not um, coming up. So let me see. I mean, if anything, I can change my camera to the to the this camera. It'll still work, but I just don't prefer to do that. See, now you can see what I wrote down. I had written down something. Okay. 
hopefully resetting the camera <laughs> or the application helps. I don't lose you guys again. Okay, so first we'll see what happens at x equals negative two. And I'm gonna go back to this original and plug in negative two for x. So if I do negative two minus four, that's gonna give me negative six. And this I can rewrite as negative one to the power n and six to the power n. And then we see that the six to the power n just kind of goes away, right? And when you add these exponents, you get negative one to the two n plus one over n. And we talked about that. That exponent is always odd. So when it's always odd, this numerator will always be negative one. Now doing the nth term test here will not help us. Because if we do the nth term test here, what's the limit of negative one over n? It's it is zero. So it doesn't diverge automatically, right? We can't we can't do. I mean, we did the nth term test in our brains, but it's inconclusive, right? It tells us on this sheet that if the limit is zero, then that's inconclusive. So doing the nth term test literally tells us nothing. Um, <laughs> but what I can do is I can factor out that negative. If every term is gonna be negative, then just factor out the negative. And I'm just looking to see if this converges or diverges without the negative, okay? That is a P-series. So this diverges. I did not spell that right. Forgot the R. What is P in this by in this particular problem? It's the exponent, which is one. And if we look at the P series test, right? You have n to some power. It diverges when p is equal to one. Okay, so my my exponent is a one, and so my p value is a one, which means it diverges. Okay, so that means there will not be a bracket a negative two. I told you it was a half and half, so it probably works at ten. Probably converges at ten, but let's go see what that looks like. So again, I'm gonna go back to the original, but I'm gonna plug in 10 for X. So instead of X minus four, it'll be 10 minus four, which is six to the power N. And the same thing kind of happens here and here as far as those canceling. But this time I still have N plus one negative one to the power n plus one. And again, if I tried to do the nth term test, the limit is zero, right? There's no such thing as plus or minus zero. So the limit is zero. So it's not gonna diverge automatically, just like the other one. So we have to apply some other tests. Now, whenever you have that alternating sign, the test that you should be applying is the alternating series test. So remember for that one, you had the two criteria, right? Um, the first criteria was that this guy was bigger than the other guy. So let's see if that's the case. And then the second criteria was when you take the limit of a n, does that equal zero? So we have to see if this meets the two criteria. Well, first we have to define a n. A n is the part of the nth term without the alternating part. So since the only thing I have in the numerator is the alternating part, it's just gonna be a one at the top. 
So this is my a n. So my a n here is one over n. If I plug in n plus one in there, it's going to be one over n plus one. And then is it true or false? If you know from there, then great. You can say, yes, it's true. If you don't know, cross multiply. And then if you can tell from there, then say, yes, it's true. If you can't subtract in from both sides, you should at least be able to tell there <laughs> that one is always bigger than zero, right? Some people can make the conclusion here, right? If this denominator is bigger, then this fraction will be smaller. Some people cross multiply and they're like, oh, well, if I'm adding one to the number, that's definitely bigger than the original number. But if that doesn't make sense, then subtract in. And eventually you can't deny it, right? It will eventually get to something that's true or not. Okay, so we did meet the first criteria, but now we have to go see if we meet the second criteria. And we do kind of already did it, but it does equal zero as n goes to infinity. So what does that mean? That means that this guy converges. The series converges at x equal to 10. So what does that mean for our interval? It means we still have a parentheses at negative two, but we should have a bracket at negative 10. And that's supposed to be an R. I don't know why my hand did not want to write an R. I do okay, example six. It's the same thing, but I have more paper, so I'm going to rewrite this. Every so many years, I try to change my writing. It's like sometimes I write my A's like this. Sometimes I write my A's like that. Sometimes I write my sevens, my Z's. And I'll write it like this for a few years, and then I'll go back to that, and I'll go back to the other one. <laughs> so I'm trying to, like, force myself to go back to this notation because I was getting some complaints. Like, I don't know what that is. Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> so let me stop doing it. So I'm trying every now and then I still put the little line in there, but I'm trying not to. Yeah, I always write, I don't know why I do that. I think it was because at some point I would start like dragging it and then it would look like a two. And so if I had the little line in it, I knew it was a seven and not a two, but it's, I don't know. I just go back and forth. I'm like so undecided in my brain, like which one's better. <laughs> Sometimes one of them, helps me keep things, but then apparently it doesn't help the students keep things straight. So, <laughs> so I gotta go back and forth. In Germany, they felt they just have their one. So you don't put the line, you don't know. It's a one. It's a one, right, right, exactly. So mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, I'm gonna try. Okay, so interval convergence again. So we definitely need to use our ratio test. So I'm going to do, and I do have a fraction. So I am going to multiply by the reciprocal of the original. So it's seven X and then N plus one. And be careful with the factorial, it's two times N plus one, then that whole thing factorial. And then flip over the original. 
Okay, now I can't count out the factorials right away. That one I'd usually do write at least a step or two. Some people kind of already know where it's going. If I write this here, then you can kind of do it on the next step. But the seven X to the N will cancel this N exponent up there. And so then this will cancel with some of those. You just kind of have to take out the 2n plus 2 and the 2n plus 1, and then you'll have the 2n factorial left, right? So we'll get 7x to the power 1, which is just 7x, and then 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. And you can take out the 7x, not a problem. It doesn't have any ends in it for the limit part. But if you do that, what do you get for the limit? Zero. You get zero. And so it doesn't really matter what x is. Anything times zero is going to be zero, right? So you got L equal to zero, which is less than one no matter what X is. So that means that your radius is negative infinity or your radius is infinity, right? Because all X means all real numbers, which means your interval is negative infinity to infinity. This is the nice one, because if you get your radius is infinity, you don't have to test the endpoints. You can't, you don't even know what infinity or negative infinity is, right? So you can't ever include infinity or negative infinity ever. So you don't even need to figure out what's going on on the endpoints. So this one's nice because that's the answer. Let me erase all this before somebody looks back at this and is like, what is all that? <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to do with anything? Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. She writes it. I sit there. I'm like, why did you write seven points? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this one was the last example. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what happens when you get the three different scenarios. So the first scenario was from example four, where we got an open interval after everything because it diverged on both of the ends. Then we had this one where he, we had like a half and half. You could get one that has brackets on both sides. It can happen. It just didn't happen to us um, with these specific series. And then the one where you get negative infinity, infinity as the interval, so that you could have all three examples. Okay. Um, the other thing that you could have is if you do this uh, thingamabob and you get that the radius is um, zero, that can happen, then you're basically just going to check what happens when x equals that um, center. Okay. And then whatever happens at x equals to at the center, if it converges, then your interval is just going to be that one number. And if it diverges, then your interval is the empty set. There's nothing. Because it could only converge at that one number. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't converge at all, right? At all. So then your it would be the empty set. Let me write that there, because that's not zero. That's the empty set. I haven't seen it happen, but it's not to say that it can't ever happen. Um, it could. There's none in the homework that do that, but it could happen. Okay, so 9.9 .9 was a little bit it, it it's good because it lets us keep practicing the eight point nine point eight stuff. Okay, but the weird part was the manipulation of this to make it look like a geometric series. 
And this is just how we're going to work with these specific um, functions. Once we get to 9.10, we don't have to worry about it looking like a specific function. We can apply what we learn in 9.10 to all functions, okay? But right now, they're just kind of warming us into what the heck a power series is. And it's essentially another representation of a function, okay? So instead of writing f of x equals that, you can write f of x as a series, okay? I have a meeting at one and everybody's messaging me. I don't know, I guess, about the meeting, but stop, I'm in class. You see the sign outside my door. <laughs> um, so this one's weird because you really wanna try to get it to look like this, because we know that once it looks like that, that is the answer to this series, right? So if we could get it to look like that, then we would know what it's gonna look like as a series, okay? Um, but that's gonna be the hard part is trying to get it to look like that, okay? So the first thing you do is you use your center because your radius does need to have your center in it. So the first step that I would do is behind that minus sign is I would minus the one and add the one at the same time. So I'm not changing the value of the original fraction, right? Because it's really like I'm adding nothing. Then what you can do is you could kick out the extra term that you don't need. So I only want the X minus one in there. So if I distribute this minus to that guy, it's gonna kick him out of that parentheses. And then I can combine my nine and my minus one to give me eight. But remember for the formula, you have to have a one in front of that minus sign, right? And right now, currently there's an eight in front of that minus sign. And that's fine, just divide everything by eight. So I'm gonna divide this term by eight. If I divide eight by eight, I get one. And then I'm gonna divide this term by eight. Once you have it in that form, the numerator is your A, and whatever's behind the minus sign is your R. Which means that my series can be written as 1 eighth times X minus 1 over 8 to the power N. Now, what I'm curious about is whether or not the computer will take this as the answer. Because when I looked at the answer, that was not what they had as the answer. It's equivalent, but it's just not what they had as the answer. I don't know if the computer will take that, but I do know it gets a new version. So if I distribute that into the numerator and the denominator, it looks like x minus one over n or to the power n and eight to the power n, which is x minus one to the power n over eight n plus one, because this guy's exponent is one. And when you multiply two things with the same base, right, you add their exponents. And I do know that it took this as the series. Be careful because they already have this part written there. All you're doing is writing in the nth term, okay? You could try and try to do it like that and see if it'll take it. And then if it doesn't, give it to them in this form. So I've literally done like half of the problem um, because the first part says find a power series for the function. We did, right? F of X is equivalent to that. Um, but then now it says also determine its interval of convergence. So now I'm exactly what I did for 9.8, okay? So we'll do our ratio test to figure that out. And I'm gonna have the limit as n goes to infinity. X minus one to the n plus one. 8 in plus 1 plus 1, and then the reciprocal of the original.
So I actually just end up with x minus one over eight. There's no, there's no ends in this, is there? So it's like everything, even though x is a variable, it's not a variable that we're worried about in the limit. So when we take the limit as n goes to infinity, we're just gonna end up with this fraction inside the bars. And we know that the series converges when that thing is less than one. And another way to write that is when what's inside the bars is between negative one and positive one. And then if you wanna know the interval of convergence, you just solve for X. So I will multiply everybody by X, by eight. That will give me negative eight X minus one and positive eight. And then I will add one to all three and I get negative seven X and nine. So I know it converges between negative seven and nine, but in order for me to know whether or not the seven and the negative seven and the nine have to have brackets, um, we have to figure out what's going on and it's specifically at those two X values. So let's go look at negative seven first. Uh oh, somebody might have got kicked out. Okay, so for x equal to negative seven, I'm gonna go back to look at my series and I'm gonna plug in negative seven in there. So then that would be negative eight to the power n. That is negative one to the power n and eight to the power n. And this eight to the power n can cancel that power of n downstairs. Now looking at that, will the series converge or diverge? Do you get zero if you take the limit of the nth term? No. So then that means it diverges. So it diverges by the nth term test since the limit as n goes to infinity of this, it actually equals plus or minus one eighth, but in either case, it's not zero, right? Because yeah, we don't know if n is even, it'll be a positive one, but if n is odd, it'll be a negative one in the numerator, but it's still eight at the bottom. Don't know if I can fit for x equal to nine in here, but we'll try. So if I go to this and I plug in nine for X, I'm actually gonna have eight to the power N over eight N plus one. Again, this eight to the N is gonna cancel the N. So we're just gonna get one on top over eight. And the same thing, it's gonna diverge because what's the limit of one over eight? It's not zero exactly. So it diverges by nth term test. Since the limit of one over eight equals one over eight, and that's not zero. So then that means my interval is gonna stay open on both ends because I got diverged for both ends. And that's what they wanted was the interval. So they wanted two parts. They ask you to plug in what you get for the power series, and it asks you to plug in what you get for the interval of convergence, okay? So there'll be two boxes 
on these problems in 9.9. .9. This is one of the cases where I didn't show you how to simulate it if it looked like this. So there were like three other problems I did, but I didn't do one where it had a number minus X, okay? So I wanted to do one of those. The other one I also wanted to do, um, I, it's kind of the same thing. It's just, I have a number in the numerator as well. So I do have a number minus X just this example, but I don't have one in the numerator and I don't have a positive C value. So I wanted to try to see what that one would look like just so that you had an example of it. So here it has four in the numerator and then my C is actually a negative number. So I just wanted to take a look at how we, how we work with that. Essentially, you're always going to be doing those same three steps. You're always going to be adding and subtracting your center where the X is at behind the minus. So you're always going to be adding and subtracting that C. And then you're always going to be kicking out the extra one that you don't need. And then you're always going to divide by whatever, the, whatever you have here after all of that's done. So first thing we're going to do is it's got to be x minus the c value and then you're going to add the c value and i'm just making sure you're doing all of this in parentheses behind the minus sign okay now you need minus the c value you need this one to stay you don't want this other one in there. So that's the one you're going to distribute the minus to. So this will be X plus seven and then a negative, a positive and the negative will make this plus seven. See, I'm putting my little lines in there sometimes and then sometimes not. Then combine your two and your seven. So I get nine in front of the minus. And then we know that nine needs to be a one. So divide everybody by nine. So it can turn into a one. So we get four ninths, one, and then we get X plus seven over nine. Now that tells me that A is four ninths and R is X plus seven over nine. Which means the series will look like four ninths in front, X plus seven over nine raised to the power in. Again, I don't know if the computer will take that, but I do know it likes the other version. I know it likes this version. So all I did was distribute that in power right to the numerator into the denominator. You can't do it when there's a plus, only when it's division or multiplication, okay? So I couldn't do like X to the N and seven to the N. That doesn't apply. And I have mentioned that like a bunch of times in this class. But I'll still have people to do it. <laughs> Don't know why, but y'all just really want to square terms or cube them or whatever the power is, but you can't. Only factors and quotients. Okay. 
Okay, so half the problem, this one, it's supposed to say more directions, but I think I did not copy it down. But it's supposed to say also determine the interval of convergence. Interval of convergence. And this is our last one, so we'll go for it. So what do I do to find the interval of convergence? Ratio test, good. So let's see, the limit as n goes to infinity and I'm gonna put n plus one in place of all the n's. And then I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal of the original which is this. And then we'll see if we can simplify a little bit. So that guy will cancel the n plus one. This guy will cancel the n. And the fours will just straight up cancel, right? Four divided by four is just one. It goes away. Multiplying by one is not going to change anything. So we end up with just x plus seven in the numerator. And in the denominator, we just have nine. And we know since there's no ends in there whatsoever, we're just gonna end up with x plus seven inside the bars over nine. And we know that the series will converge when that value is less than one. Or when that value is between without is between negative one and one. So I'm going to multiply by nine. And then I'm going to minus seven. I get negative 16 X and two. So we just have to see what's happening at negative 16 and two to know whether or not they stay open or we can put a bracket. So I'm going to go to my series before I started doing the ratio test, and I'm going to plug in negative 16 in here for x. Negative 16 plus 7 is negative 9. And then negative 9 is the same as negative 1 times 9, and they're factors, so I can distribute the negative. And then nine to the power n can cancel the n power. So you get negative one to the power n times four over nine. Will that converge or diverge? Well, I shouldn't ask, will it converge? Will it diverge is the question. Not infinity. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity, this could be positive or negative, right? But you get positive or negative four ninths, right? So in the fact that the limit is not zero, it's going to diverge, okay? So this diverges by the nth term test since the limit as n goes to infinity of this is plus or minus four ninths, which is not equal to zero.
Now, if I do for x equal to two and I plug in two in for x, this is gonna be nine to the power in. Which means it's gonna simplify with the bottom. So this will cancel out the in and you just get four over nine. Well, that's gonna diverge because of the same exact region, right? It just doesn't have two values. It just has one value for ninths, but regardless, it's still not zero, okay? So then what is the interval? Our interval is gonna be from negative 16 to two, but no brackets at all. So if you're doing a problem like this, and there's, when we get to 9.10, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna have to give me the series for the functions. So that's half the problem. And then the other half is finding those radius or intervals of convergence, depending on which one they ask you for, okay? Um, so be sure that you're showing all the parts, all the parts of how you got the series, how you decided the interval, and then how you decided what was going on on the endpoints, okay? I am looking for all three of those bits. That's it. Does anybody have any questions? Sure. You got a list. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Was it from the homework? Oh, okay. Which one? Example five. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. We have uh, for x equals negative two. Uh huh. On the right side, it went from um, negative one in plus one, and then there's another negative one in. How come it's not negative one to the n plus two? We just add it. This right. and this. Yeah. When you go to the right, then it's negative one to the n or two n plus one. Uh huh. Because so what I do you get when you do n plus one plus n? These are multiplied together, so you are exponents. <laughs> I said it too fast. I, 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 <laughs> I was thinking it would be n plus two, n plus one, and then another n. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Gotcha. I got it. I got mm -hmm. it. Okay. 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 Oh, that's so nice. I'll start testing. Right, right. No, you're good. <laughs> I do already have a. Just keep texting me because I had I, the evening. I only have one evening, um, like Zoom session, but people will be booking them. So <laughs> I just tell people, even if you wanted it, but it was already blocked, just text because as soon as I'm done with whoever that student was, I can text back and forth. I don't like to be on the Zoom longer than that hour because at that point the kids are going ballistic and I'm trying to get them down like very resistant. <laughs> but I can text and no one would know what my kid, my children are doing. <laughs> so it works out. Yes, just text me. Remember your tail? I'm making my daughter the dentist, and he's like, "No, but Abby does." And I'm like, "You're listening to the directions of the seven-year-old." <laughs> oh wow! This makes <laughs> that'll be so fun. Great. <laughs> Oh, they got right, Dennis. <laughs> right. Okay. Does anybody in the remote have any questions for me? If not, we finished a little tiny bit early. Um, and you guys can go if you want to, or you can hang back and work on your web assignment. It's completely up to you. Okay. Um, but if you're gonna leave, bye. Have a good one, and I will see you. Today is what Wednesday. Yes. So I won't see you again till Monday. <laughs> so have a good weekend. Okay, Yes, thank you, we're going to do, yes, thank you. We're going to do 9.10 and then the next day we're going to work on the review. Like the two other and then I think I'm good. The following week, we're going to start on chapter 10, but I'm going to leave the test open up until that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. 
I want you to do it before Thanksgiving. So you have like a whole week to do it. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. I haven't even looked at any of these. I wrote down the answers just in case. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I didn't even look at any of them. Bye okay. bye. Have a good one. Those are extra. Oh, let me stop recording.